Welcome back everyone. I am excited to have finally the newest T-Mobile home internet gateway. This is the third 5G version. You can see the older two here. And I had to jump through many, many hoops to get this. Just so you know, I am not affiliated with T-Mobile in any form or fashion. I pay for each of these services uh, every month, uh, 50 bucks. But um, it's worth it to show you guys the differences between them. I want to open this one up. This is the Sagemcom 5688W gateway, which in pictures looks very similar to the Arcadian KVD21, which is also black and kind of squarish. And then there's the older uh, Nokia uh, 5G21 gateway here. These ones are sporting a little bit of a uh, cooling fan accessories. But um, this one I want to take out. I want to look at it. We'll look at the features, look at any kind of settings that it has, how it compares to these other two. Then we have to obviously get into things like speed. You know, we got to talk about um, taking it apart and putting antennas on it, as well as how they compare uh, apples to apples, same location, same signals. You know, what do they do performance wise? So I'm going to touch on some of those in this video where we're going to look at this, take it out, and compare the features of it. And then uh, obviously stay tuned and like and subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified of new videos. I put lots of videos out there, especially around this home internet stuff. And uh, you can put comments down below in the video if you have suggestions or something else or you have any questions. I am a uh, fairly involved YouTuber and so I do like to read the comments and reply to them when possible. So uh, consider doing that. But let's open it up and see what's inside the box. All right, so there's really only two things in the box, and that's the gateway and the AC adapter plug. And this one uses a USB-C uh, plug, just like the Arcadian one does. The um, the Nokia one actually has a uh, the round um, plug. But the quick start guide is very simple, and uh, it basically says put it in a position. It kind of tells you put it by a window facing the tower. You know, I know from setting up these other ones, they do have. Uh, the T-Mobile Home Internet app, which is different than the regular T-Mobile app, but that uh, Home Internet app does have a guide where it tries to tell you um, where to put the gateway, like what side of the house to put it on to be to the closest tower. Um, that will help you, and then you plug it in, and then uh, here it tells you to uh, download the app at uh, the first time. What I will say is typically for all of these gateways, including at other uh, companies, Verizon and others, you want to plug it in and you want to leave it plugged in for a little while. Oftentimes they'll do a firmware update when you first plug them in. If you plug it in somewhere just to see if kind of it turns on and then you unplug it um, you know, in five minutes or ten minutes, whatever, uh, you might interrupt that and you're just more likely to have problems than uh, plugging it in and let it be on um, ideally for you know several hours at a minimum so that if it needs to do any updates, it can do those and then otherwise it might do them overnight as well that's another time that they uh, they push the update all right let me power this guy on and see what it does all right so this one actually does have a power switch on the back side which the nokia one does have that but the arcadia one doesn't so this actually gives you the option to have it plugged in but actually not powered on so now i'm just powering on for the first time we'll let it go through um its boot up process here now, some of you guys asked me, how do you get three of these different gateways um, at the same address? I will say it is difficult. I am not breaking uh, rules. I, I do a lot of discussions. In order to get a specific gateway, T-Mobile really doesn't want uh, you to do that. They, um, they try to tell you every time that, hey, they look different, but function functionally they're the same. I would say, in my experience, that's not exactly true. There are differences between them where the Nokia one seemed to be quicker uh, for most people um, with its um, you know, band aggregation in 41. It seemed to be faster but more buggy. The Arcadian one seemed to have um, more stability but uh, tended to be slower. And then the Sagemcom one, I'm not sure yet uh, how it will perform, but I will say that um, I think they run actually very similar or the same firmware from what I have seen and uh, that's what we will try to find out here. Alright so this one just told me um, you know this is how you navigate you press the uh, 
right button to go right, left button to go left, and the center button to hit OK. Uh, seems pretty straightforward. And then here it tells me to download the T-Mobile Home Internet app. But I can see at the top it also gives me four out of five bars of signal right here. And it's telling me in the top left that it's on 5G. So that's all good. Um, it says there's zero devices connected to it. I have zero text messages. And then I can change my language. And that's all that it has on this little LCD screen here. I'm going to hook up to the Wi-Fi of this guy with my phone. And on the back of it is a sticker. And there's a couple things in there. But uh, in the, about, uh, the lower uh, half, there's a Wi-Fi name and a Wi-Fi password. Those are what you want to look for to actually find that Wi-Fi password. You can also plug into the Ethernet cable. That obviously works as well. So um, just so you know, this is Wi-Fi 6. So that means it actually has both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz gigahertz Wi-Fi signals um, kind of combined with the same name and your device will supposedly connect to whichever one is better I've had trouble with that in the past especially with my older 2.4 gigahertz only devices so I tend to split them out I can actually show you how to do that in here as well but let me get connected to this one and then we'll go through any setup process all right so I typed in the annoyingly long password that's uh, has uh, periods in it and so right now it says internet may not be available and that just means that it's probably not um, activated here all right so now i'm opening up the t-mobile home internet app and again this one is different than the regular t-mobile one so make sure you search the uh, play store or apple store for the right one there and you need to be connected either to its wi-fi or up through ethernet um, in order to use this home internet app to, wor to work all right, so it took a little bit uh, to load, but the good thing here is that it realizes, hey, it's connected, and it says I need to set up the device. So I'm just going to click uh, Set Up, and then I'm going to tell it's a 5G gateway. It says it's plugged in. Sure. Um, I'm not going to play the video, but you guys, um, it'll go through and tell you, you know, put it on a shelf or put it up high, put it by a window. You know, those are things to um, do to try to improve your signal. I have other videos out there. They go in depth of what you have to do. What I will say is that they can be sensitive. The uh, Nokia one is definitely more sensitive. I mean, I'm talking about you rotate it five degrees, and that can make a big difference in your speed. So um, the Arcadia one seems to be less sensitive to that. But, um, you know, some people find they put it on the side. They put it right here at just this angle. They get the best signal. So um, something to consider. Now, here is where I was telling you. It can help guide you with what direction you want for your signal. So I'm going to go ahead and have it share my location and see what it tells me here. Okay, and I had this problem before where it doesn't seem to work very well. Um, I'm going to try to do uh, try again, see if I can do it a manual way. All right, that doesn't look like it's going to work. All right, so we'll skip. Now I'm going to go ahead and say I found the spot. I'm going to scan this QR code. All right, so now you can update your Wi-Fi, SSID, and password if you want to. If you have trouble memorizing it, just stick to the default. At least you have a sticker that tells you what it is all the time. The other trick I'll tell you is if you are replacing some other system, maybe you have CenturyLink or maybe you have AT&T DSL, or maybe you've gotten rid of cable or some other service as well, what you can do if you really have a lot of devices and you don't want to, have to go through and reset up their Wi-Fi, you can actually rename this Wi-Fi um, and password to whatever you have previously. So even if it's an AT&T um, name and it says, you know, AT&T 8539, um, that's what you can make this one. And as soon as you turn this one on and turn the other one off, your devices will find this one and connect to it automatically you won't you won't have to change anything so that's one trick um, to do if you if you want to do that way all right so next you can actually change the admin password again if you um, have trouble memorizing them just leave it at the admin it's listed here on the back sticker note it is different than the Wi-Fi password all right so it looks like it is set up that was fairly quick and easy and it says a very good signal so I can go into here and look at some other information one I can um, go to the network and this is where you can see for this um, name of the Wi-Fi it has both the 5 gigahertz and 
four gigahertz Wi-Fi ones. This is where you can um, split those out. And the way you would split it out is instead of having it automatic, you would force it to just be one of these, either 2.4 or 5. So I can say, hey, I'm going to make this the 5 gigahertz. If you have older devices and you need to make them more backwards compatible, you might want to go in here and hit this WPA slash WPA2. And that would be if your device um, is a WPA only encryption uh, capable, then it would not work with the WPA2 slash 3 option. So that's something, um, maybe that's like a compatibility issue. And um, then that's really the only other option you have besides to hide the SSID. So what this means is it doesn't turn off the Wi-Fi, but it means that if you have a device and you search for it, it's not going to show up in your list. You have to manually type in what the SSID is in order to connect to it. So those are the options. So if I hit save here on 5 gigahertz, this will make this one only sending out a 5 gigahertz signal and not a 2.4 gigahertz. But I can add back in another 2.4 gigahertz signal and that will allow me to separate the two bands out. They'll have two different names and I can decide which one I want to connect to. All right, so now it rebooted, so I can go back in here to networks. I can see it's just the five gigahertz. And again, I could go in here and I can add a new one. I have to give it a new name, a new password, and then I can select 2.4. And that will give me another channel out there that would be this 2.4 gigahertz band. I'm not going to do it because then I have to wait another two minutes for the thing to reboot. But what I will go ahead here and show you is under the more uh, tab at the bottom, there's the gateway information, which will tell me things like the firmware. All right, the next one down is the advanced cellular metrics. This one is of most use to me. This is my, my favorite part of the app. Um, and this will show you what your signal is. So at the top, you can see there's an LTE and a 5G one. So the uh, LTE one, the, the things you want to look at, really, the key ones are this... Um, really the RSRP and the SINR. So those are both your signal strength and your signal to noise ratio. So that's kind of um, your, um, you know, how much interference you're getting from other signals. And um, the RSRQ is also, is kind of a combination of those. So in some ways um, that is a single metric you could look at. But for all of these, they're um, higher is better but with a negative number a less negative number is actually higher right so uh, for rsrp for example minus 98 is better than minus 99 or minus 100 uh, because it's actually closer to zero so more positive so you'll see that it changes a little bit when it's flipping around and then down here on the bottom you can see the band the band is very very important to understand because some of the bands are better than other bands and um, that's what you want to see here now you can click on these and they tell you some extra information so you click on any of these um, lines here this one will tell you that uh, band B66 is an extension extension of band B4 and that it's this 1700 slash 2100 megahertz range so if you're looking for antenna information or anything else this kind of tells you at least what frequency the band is that you're connecting to if you go back up here to the 5g one this shows you that i'm also connected to 5g and you can see from this minus 109 rsrp number that it is not a very good um, signal strength but actually the um, signal to noise is horrendous it's a negative 24. I've never seen one that bad. I wonder if that's actually a uh, error in the um, in the processing here. Typically, I would um, only see like maybe a minus two or something. I've never seen something that that far low. But um, N71 is their 5G extended, which is not their ultra capacity. So this N71 is a 600 uh, megahertz uh, frequency. Their N41 band is really their good one. And, uh, I mean, N71 is not bad. Uh, I would say it's good. The N41 is great um, for a lot of people in that it's a higher frequency and it has more bandwidth capability. 
So this is the one that you can get hundreds of megabits per second of speed. N71, I would say, uh, probably an average is around 100. Uh, I would I would say, you know, anywhere from 50 to 150 or 200 is what you could expect out of N71. All right, so shortly after I got it all activated, it started showing that it's downloading a firmware update. So this is, um, you know, clearly one of the first thing it does, and that's where I was saying you do want to be careful and not unplug it while it's doing this um, because you can mess it up. So just let it do its thing. I know you probably are anxious to get um, going with some blazing fast speed, but just give it a minute to uh, to do this. All right, so I went and did a couple speed tests with this Sagem Com One, and I will say that I'm actually pretty impressed with it. It appears first glance here um, that it is faster than at least the Arcadian one in the same location. I'll give you some more details. I need to do like some thorough testing. I really want to try to make sure it's fair and I do multiple tests um, to give you a full report. I'll do that as a separate video. But I did go in there and run and what's kind of cool about my house is that I can get a couple different specific um, bands or quality of signal depending on which floor I'm on. So in the basement I connect to a cell phone booster which has um, you know bad signal to noise quality as well as um, kind of worse bands out there. My first floor I get N71 for T-Mobile and it kind of flip-flops between what LTE band is on there B66 uh, or uh, B2. But on the first floor in my old office, I was getting about 80 megabits per second download and 5 megabits per second upload. And that was on the N71, so 5G extended. Now, uh, after I ran that test, I went up to the third floor loft. And that one is basically in my attic level. But I'm able to, it is climate controlled um, little area there. So that's where I actually keep my stuff typically. And that's also where I can put my waveform external antennas in the attic next to there. But in there, just with a stock unit, I'm able to pick up N41, which is true for these other ones as well. And I was able to basically double my upload and quadruple my download simply by going up two floors from where I was before. So that's something important to, to note. I was able to get 280 megabits per second download and 10 upload. I'll say that those upload speeds are on the slow end. T-Mobile seems to be a little bit inconsistent. You know, there'll be days when I'll get uh, single digit upload speeds for whatever reason. And then other days I might get uh, 20, 30 or, or more megabits per second for upload. Typically from a prioritization standpoint, it's your download that suffers. Uh, so I don't know if it's a backhaul issue with my local towers or something like that, but um, my upload sometimes gets slowed down as well. Uh, I'll say another thing is um, external antennas, I'll give you a spoiler alert, they are possible here and it should be fairly straightforward. I do need to take this apart and do some testing for you as well. So I have several new videos planned uh, of this guy for both taking it apart as far as how it compares for speed wise. If you saw, you know, on the app itself, and I didn't really show the web browser, but there's nothing to it. Um, effectively, there are no uh, real options in there at all. So they're really having you use the app to do all your uh, the very few settings or to look at the cell metrics and whatnot that are in there. But as always, I will always poke around and look to see if there's any um, fun hidden settings or options that we can play with in there. Otherwise, stay tuned for my channel. Check out the other videos out there. And thanks for tuning in.